So I just figured I'd give you guys a quick update on how the whole bee project is going. Um, <clears throat> on the ground there is what remains of what used to be my top bar hives. You know, I had all four of them set up here, and I've still got the original over there. I'm going to keep the original just for a you know learning point and observation sort of hive. Um, but I've converted the rest of them. They were all the subsequent ones I'd built were kind of rickety anyway. I didn't really like them very much. I liked that last one the most, so I kept it or the first one, I guess. Uh, so I decided to keep it, but. Um, the two that are on the ground there, the two langs, um, were both converted over from top bar hives. Uh, a little lesson I learned, and a, you know, I think I'll make a habit of it from here on out, is I you know, basically did an extraction from a top bar hive to a lang hive. And so when I did that with this one, you see it's just a single deep. And um, what happened was when you have that honey at the top of each frame of comb, it's very heavy in comparison to the brood nest that's below it. So, uh, what ended up happening was a lot of the comb, when I would, you know, place it into the frames, it kind of collapsed and crushed and warped. So I uh, made a big mess. I ended up having to get in there a couple days later and uh, cut a lot of it out and try to straighten it and correct it. But the bees seem to be doing good now. Um, that's not a cluster of bees on the front. That's a scrap of comb that I cut out and corrected. Um, and I just let I just left that there for them to clean out. But this one over here, you see, I did it as a double medium instead. And so yeah, I did have to use two boxes and twice as many frames, but. Um, I was able to cut out, you know, smaller sections and fit a really good piece of brood comb into the each frame um, without having all that weight of that honeycomb on top of it. And actually what I ended up doing was I actually just didn't transfer any of their honeycomb at all. I just left it all out in front of the hive. I left it in the old uh, top bar hive body and let them go rob it back. So they seem to be doing just fine. I'm seeing all sorts of activity going in and out right now, so I'm, I'm really not worried about them at all. Uh, and then we'll walk over here and I'll show you the rest of what I've got going. Um, that's a tub of honeycomb and brood comb, just comb in general left over from a cutout that I did yesterday. A lot of drone comb in it, but also a lot of just empty comb. Um, I didn't see much need in transferring all that drone comb. This hive had a lot of drones. Now, not an alarming number. You know, some people would be scared, okay, well you got a drone laying queen. No, because it also had a lot of brood comb too. So, um, just a lot of drone comb because it's spring and they're building up and they're ready to swarm. So, that's that. I'll melt that down in a couple of days. Once I get done with the current batch I'm melting down, I tell you, doing these extractions, I got so much comb on my hands. I got it just piled around everywhere. I need to get my solar wax melter over there up and running again so that I can passively melt it and not have to take the time to go out and fire up my cooker all the time. But there's another box. It's, again, more comb, dead comb. Um, this is a cutout that I did. Uh, this is the one that I did the first week of January. And... Uh, when I did it, I caught the queen and I transferred her, but there was little to no eggs. or There was no brood comb. And as I was setting them up at home, I found one piece of comb that had some eggs in it. And that was it. Um, and so I was a little concerned, but I thought, hey, you know, the queen, she's fine. She's been laying. Everything will be okay. But I came out a week later and they were vacated and gone. So I don't know if they swarmed out or if, you know, the queen just failed and they couldn't do anything about it. Um, there was a lot of, I think they swarmed out because there was a lot of just vacant comb left. Um, there was, I guess there was a little bit of brood comb and it was abandoned. Uh, and what eggs were in there, I looked at that piece and the eggs had, you know, hadn't even hatched out. So they must have swarmed out pretty much shortly after I uh, placed them there. Um, but then on the far right you see is the, that was the hive that I did that was a second story soffit. You can see a lizard. I don't know if you guys caught that or not, but I just saw a lizard crawl up inside the outer cover. The lizards like to get up there and, I guess, catch bees, but I don't mind. I suppose I could do something about the lizards, but I really don't mind. But that one's doing really good. That was a cutout from back in September 2012, I think. It's a great, great queen. Uh, I've looked in that hive multiple times. I see no traces of any sort of varroa. Uh, they do tolerate the hive beetles. They don't aggressively go after them. So I'd like one that was a little bit more aggressive to go after the hive beetles, but they're extremely gentle bees. I barely use, barely if ever use smoke when I work with them. I gotta keep backing up because I got one after me. Go away. I hate mean bees. They're just angry because the weather was the weather was not very good this morning. It was rainy and cold, so there's a couple that are still aggressive. Anyway, um, beside that, in the middle, the unpainted box, that is the queen castle that I built. Um, I tried to make quick splits into that, um, as I made a stupid rookie mistake and basically transferred too much comb and not enough bees. And so they ended up uh, dying out. Two out of three of them died out. The third one actually did hatch out a queen. 
luckily, and I actually spotted her on Friday um, doing okay. A little virgin queen she had just hatched. So anyway, uh, at least I got one out of the deal. Uh, the bonus of that was that the bees that started in there was from a cutout and they were uh, loaded with varroa, which I didn't like. And so the frame that I gave them of eggs when I pinched their other queen, actually their other queen died, um, I opened that hive and found queen cells. And so I panicked, but that's when I made the splits was when I found all those queen cells. Um, but since then they actually died. No! <laughs> Ah, she's all over me. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> you guys get to see me run like a little girl because it's not that I, you know. Okay, so I am scared of getting stung, but mostly it's just because it hurts and I don't like it. So let me go. Got to run in the house and grab my tool, also known as my hat. I'm not very good at swatting bees with my bare hand, but my hat is really accurate. Big fly swatter, you know. All right, now, now I'm armed. Go finish the video and finish what I'm telling you guys. Um, just a quick, you know, compilation of everything I got going on. That bee actually tried to sting my phone <laughs> before she went after my head. She didn't get me though. Didn't get me. That's why I swatted the phone and dropped it on the ground because she was on it and I was trying to kill her. Um. Anyway, okay, so yeah, I've got one left in the queen castle that made it. So an effort to turn one hive into three ended up with only one. So I'm no worse off. Set back a little bit. But they're better bees because it was a queen from that hive to the right that is uh, varro free. So hopefully that'll be better genetics anyway. Um, and then the one that's in the middle, that is actually a cell builder colony right now. That's my first attempt at raising queens. I made a short video the other day as part one of uh, queen breeding. And so uh, that's what's in there right now is a frame with... Uh, all the cell cups and the graphs in it um, so we'll check on them in a couple of days and see if they're pulling those frames or not I sure hope they are if, you know I don't have any books to read about it but I've watched plenty of YouTube videos and I've pretty much built my whole beekeeping operation from YouTube so far so if I fail that's fine I'll learn from my mistakes um, I wasn't real confident when I made the graphs but that's because it's the first time I've ever done it um, and then next one to the left there um, so second from the left that is the first uh, yeah, first top bar hive that I converted. I converted into a double nuke box um, and subsequently I have looked in there and the honey super that was sitting on top of it was empty. Uh, so it was just a lot of wasted space so I actually condensed it back down to a single deep. I'm going to let them fully draw out that, or not single deep, but a single nuke, deep nuke box. So I'm going to let them fully draw that deep nuke and then I'll see what put a honey super back on. And then the one to the left of it there, um, that was another bee removal. That was the one that I got on December 30th out of the tree. And they're doing really great, actually. That box sitting on top is not used. It's just empty sitting on top of it. That was the honey super that was on top of the other one that I just talked about. Uh, and then the last one here on the left, that is the one from the removal that I did um, just yesterday. So they look like, and you see a lot of dead bees on the ground. Actually, that big pile there, that was actually a, a jar full of dead bees and um, beetle larvae from one of the queen castle ones that died out on me. Uh, when I opened it, I found them all dead. I found a bunch of beetle larvae in the bottom, and so I picked them all up and I put them in a honey jar that was sitting there and screwed the lid on, left it sit in the sun for a week and a half uh, to kill the small hive beetles, um, which now it smells horrific, but I dumped them out there. But the dead ones that you see scattered over here on the ground, those are dead ones from this cutout yesterday. So not an alarming number. I mean, I, I always lose some when I do the cutout. It's a pretty, pretty rough process on the bees, but uh, they seem to be doing good. They're coming and going today as well. So looks like hopefully everything will be okay with that one. Uh, but that's it for now. See you.